Hey guys, this is Greg. Uh, I'm going to be doing a quick little tutorial on how to use uh, light functions inside of UDK to create a cool little flickering light effect. Um, the end result of the effect that we're going to get here is, if I just play our level from right here, is uh, we get this kind of like flickering light that goes on and off at a random interval. And uh, this creates a cool little effect. It's kind of almost like a survival horror kind of dealy. Um, and I'm just going to go really quickly into how uh, we how we would set this up. <clears throat> so, the first thing that you're going to need is you guys are going to need a light. Um, more or less, any light is going to work as long as it is uh, a toggleable, a movable, or a dominant light. Um, doesn't matter if it's a spotlight, a directional. Uh, I don't know about directional. Don't quote me on that. Um, I don't know as long as the point light, a spotlight, uh, any of those kinds of lights. Um, <clears throat> now. The way that light functions work is that it's actually a material that you plug into your that you plug into the light that winds up creating this effect. So you guys can use this for all sorts of different um, all sorts of different functions. So if you guys wanted to have uh, a light that was shining through a, a window and it was uh, and it was projecting something on there, oh, it's like a stained glass window, something along those lines. This would be a perfect use of that. So really quickly here's my material editor and it's a pretty simple um, function right here uh, let me just get rid of this constant clamp because I'm not using it so essentially what we have is we have a time node that's plugging into three uh, two sine nodes and a cosine node and these sine nodes are at random intervals so if I click on one this one's at 5.126500 this one's at 20 is a 2.156 and this one's at uh, 1.572. Now what this is happening, what this is doing, it's essentially making it so that the sine waves are appearing at a completely random, uh, they're, they're, they're fluctuating up and down at an, uh, an area that's so random that it would be impossible for the player to ever be able to realize that they are um, repeating, unless you had like some, some sort of pattern savant. So our sine nodes right here, uh, and if you don't know how to get those, you just right click and go to, uh, go to math and cosine and then down here we have sine and then our time node to get that one you just right click and go to utility and time so uh, we have the two sine nodes which are plugging into add and to get an add node you can hit you can hold a on your keyboard and left click or you can go to um, math new add and we have down here, we have this absolute value. So essentially what this is doing is it's taking uh, any negative uh, numbers and, it's, make, and, and, it, and it's, it's making them positive. So if you have a negative 5.113, it's making it 5.113. Um, and you can get that guy by right clicking and going to math and new abs, so new absolute value. And we're adding those both together into this add node. And then we're plugging it into this floor function. Uh, which is essentially it's uh, a binary function. It's either uh, one or zero. It's either on or off, which is creating this um, this flickering effect. If we had just plugged the add into our emissive channel, then it would kind of fade in and out. Uh, that's a good effect if you're looking for something along those lines. But I was looking for just a light that's toggling on and off. And to get that floor effect, uh, just in your material expressions over here, just type in floor, and it'll it'll be the one thing that pops up. And you guys are going to plug that into your preview material 4. Uh, and as you can see, for some reason, all of my channels are turned off except my emissive map. And the reason that I have that done is, uh, and even if I, 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 if you can see, I just switched it from MLM unlit to MLM fong. And this is MLM fong is the default. But even then, it's still just an emissive map. And the reason, and this is very important, is that under our mutually exclusive usage used as a light function is checked. So if I uncheck that, it powers on all the nodes. If I check it on, then it's uh, just the emissive map. So once you're done and you've made your material and you've compiled it, what you'll do is you'll make a, uh, a new light. So I can actually just delete this little guy right here and we'll start from scratch. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to add actor and I'm going to add a point light. <clears throat> And this level is still in production, so or it's still in, uh, not production, but I'm still working on it, so please excuse the uh, bareness of it. Sorry. And uh, so uh, grab your light and right-click on them, 
and um, go to convert light and con I'm going to convert this guy to a point light toggleable but again uh, you can convert it to a uh, spotlight movable or a spotlight toggleable or a directional light toggleable or movable or dominant um, it essentially needs to be one of the dynamic lights so I'm just going to convert him to a point light toggleable and uh, now you can see he's a point light toggleable because he has a little chain running right down here so uh, if you right click him again and open your point light toggleable um, properties uh, I have all these properties open because um, I was looking through them looking and debugging some stuff but what you'll usually see is just this this base this base screen um, and open up your light and then open up your point light component oh excuse me uh, your light component and uh, if you look there's a, a little brightness scale and your light color where you can modify the brightness of your light and the color of your light but then there's this little function doodad right here and it says none and it says the light function to be applied to this light. Note that only non-light map lights use direct, uh, which is use direct light map equal false, can have a light function. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, hit the create new object and a new light function. And it's going to add in this little light function um, va uh, variable right here. And I'm just going to expand that. And in my source material, it says none. And you can see that we can plug something into this. So I'm just going to go into my materials and find my light function flicker material. And I'm just going to hit the green arrow and it's going to drag that in. And as you can see, the, the light turned off, quote unquote, but as you can see, it's actually uh, just doing its job now. So um, I'm also going to turn on cast dynamic shadows. Uh, you don't have to do that. I do that because I want it to cast shadows for players. and. Uh, Next, oh, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn the brightness down um, to around 0.5, maybe 0.25. Yeah, so we get a nice kind of eerie light there. And then I'm just going to close this guy here. Oh, sorry about sorry about Camtasia popping up. <coughs> um, the thing that you have to uh, the thing that you do have to do though is um, you're, you don't have to build your lighting to get these guys to work, although, of course, building your lighting for all your other lights is going to make them look significantly better. You do, however, have to build your paths. So I'm just going to build my paths really quickly, and I got some node nonsense here. And then I'm just going to um, right-click and play from here. And we can see that our light is now flickering. On and off. On. Off. And, uh... The cool thing about this is that you can actually couple this with the emissive channel on a um, on another object. So, um, for argument's sake, uh, let's say that our little box over here is the is the doodad that's causing our light to actually uh, flicker. Um, of course, this isn't exactly this isn't exactly true because you know the light is is too strong and is also <clears throat> light's too strong and also it's not orange, but for argument's sake, let's just say that's what's going on. So if I actually open up my box material, um, and my emissive channel is right down here, and then I open up my light function flicker, and I grab these guys right here. I'm going to copy them just by hitting Control C and Control V. Oh, um, you can't just control. You can't just click drag to be able to select everything. You have to cl click. You have to press Control and Alt, and then click and drag, and then I'm just going to hit Control C, and I'm going to come back to my, going to come back to my box material, and I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm a, I'm a little, I think it's a multiply node. It might be an add node, but I'm not 100% sure. Just throw this guy on here, and throw this guy on here, and then we plug this into our emissive channel. Uh, it would look like we'd have to, um, I think we have to cl uh, clamp down our floor right here. Plug him in there. Yeah, so it's just turning on and off. So if we compile that, we come back in here, and I'm just going to uh, play. It looks like the light is due to... Um, this guy turning on and off. 
which is really really good for making a like uh, these are actually my lights so I can turn these on and off and uh, have make it look like those lights are turning off when the lights go off and that'll uh, really help sell this scene so those are light functions and how to set them up with materials and how to incorporate that with the other uh, with other materials to actually make a cool light source look like it's flickering um, if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, or you guys can go to my website, which is uh, www.gregmerls.com. It will also be in the comment section below, or in the, um, the messages below. And feel free to leave a negative or positive comment, uh, or any questions on anything, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So I hope you have a good one. Uh, I hope this helped.